Thanks for having me today, John, and welcome everybody to the session. I, I've been working in this industry for a little over 25 years. I've been working directly with, with home builders and now trade contractors. And I, there's, there's been a lot that has happened. There's been a lot to help the communication and everything that goes into building a house and, and all of the individuals that are involved. There's been a lot to go into that communication from a digital standpoint. However, if you look at McKinsey's Global Institute of Digitalization Index here, this kind of lays out a number of different industries that we may be familiar with here that drive our economy today. So if we look at the top, we have things like media and professional services. There's a lot of green there. The green is good. That means there's a lot of things that are happening here that are digitized, okay? When you start getting into the yellow portion, that's kind of a little bit of a transitionary period. And red is red is not so good. Red means you're you're sort of behind in comparison to those that are not. And so, if you kind of look over here to the to the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that construction in general comes in right above agriculture and hunting. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of red in there. There's some areas where we're starting to turn the turn the table a little bit, but. I think the point of this is that if we can focus on digitizing this industry just a little bit more, it's going to really start to set this industry apart. It's going to really start to help the communication that goes into building a home and undergoing large construction projects. And that's kind of what I'm excited to talk a little bit about today. Yeah. So we're, we're ahead of Farmer Brown and Daniel Boone is what it looks <laughs> yeah. like. But it's better yeah. than that, right? We have made some... And just, just, like digitization for digitization's sake, let's let's just speak a little bit, Bob, to the core benefits. Really, kind of you know efficiency, quality. Just to just to kind of simply put it at a very high level, if I am building a home and I have a lot of people that are involved to help me build the home, I can give them a piece of paper, I can call them on the phone, and I can tell them what's happening. But really, I'm the middle person, right? So. I may not get it right. There may be changes. I may not get the timing correct. If we can get that in a digital environment, now you've eliminated paper. You've eliminated giving information out that is incorrect. You can make changes on a dime and you can go and communicate that to where people are in that moment. So they don't have to drive to get the piece of paper. They don't have to answer your call in between other calls. So what it does is it takes you to the next level of communication. And then when we think about managing the cost and looking at our finances and processing change orders, and the list goes on and on and on. These are all very time um, dominant type of scenarios where if we get them wrong, we can really deliver the wrong thing, which can be extremely costly for a business and a relationship between the builders and the trades and the suppliers that are involved. Let's talk about um, some of the specific challenges that are uh, facing the trade contractor, the trade partner specifically. Yeah, so so a trade is is one aspect. If we're talking about a new construction project here, there are multiple companies that are involved, and we call those for this presentation purpose. We'll call them trade contractors. So there's going to be more, multiple trade contractors involved in the project, and they all have their piece. They all have their specialty. So the builder is going to communicate with each of those trade contractors on that specialty piece, and they're going to do it in usually one or two forms. It's either a general agreement that's uh, defined in the beginning, or it's in the form of a purchase order. And the purchase order is really going to lay out exactly all the details that need to happen. So the trade contractor is going to receive that purchase order from a builder. Um, that's important. That's going to allow the, the trade contractor to align their resources and then come out to the builder's site and accomplish what needs to be accomplished and ensure that it is the correct thing that needs to be done and that the money is correct so that the trade knows exactly how much they're going to get paid. These trade businesses are typically small businesses. They have some back office staff and then they have crews themselves that are out doing the work. And so sometimes that trade needs to get the purchase order and then align their crews out in the field to go do the work. Sometimes the people that are running these trade businesses, maybe they didn't go to school for business management. Sometimes they grow up in the trade themselves and they evolve into running a business and they're thrown right into this operational manufacturing type of business process. So you have you have a little bit of a lack of training. You have some some chaotic scenarios that may happen if technology is not included. And you may end up with different tools like spreadsheets or paper that kind of get in there and just kind of 
kind of mix things up sometimes and cause some mistakes. And I kind of want to go back to what you had said in the, in the beginning of this presentation, John. Builders have been working on this for a while now. Over 20 years, they've been implementing systems that will allow each of the individual builders to communicate more effectively with their buyers and their trade contractors. Yeah. And so this kind of lays out a little bit of a day in the life of a trade. And let's assume that the builder has some systems in place because they've been doing this for a while. Well, there's still some challenges. There's still supply chain challenges for both the builders and the trades. And there's cost increases for both. There's schedule communication and inaccuracy, and there's labor constraints for both the builders and the trades. And so this kind of points that out. And so if we assume that these builders have adopted technology to make their businesses better, a lot of times what you run into is that the builder will have a one-way communication telling the trade what to do. But remember, there are still all of these challenges for the trade. So the trade still needs to buy their own material. The trade still deals with their own commodity price increases. They still deal with not only receiving a scheduled date from a builder, but they have to go schedule all of their crews and their labor to go do the work that needs to be done. And then when those dates change, there is, there's an issue with trying to make sure that their crews are kept up with the, with the changes. And then just being able to make sure that we can get labor to be able to go out and do what needs to be done. And so these are the types of challenges that I see, that we see here today, that even when the builders have some digitalization in place, the yeah. trades are still running into these issues. What are you guys doing about it? There's a couple of things, right? So we have we have a product, uh, we have a, a number of products, I should say. In the, in the residential home construction division, we supply products for the builders uh, to become more efficient and digitize and run their business. We also have uh, products out there for the trade contractors that work for the individual builders. And so if we have a software solution in place, one of those products, the name of the product is Bolt. It was developed by trade contractors for trade contractors. And we are really working with a number of trades that work with some of our builder customers and beyond to be able to look at these solutions and get these solutions in place. And so there's some real benefits if you can, as a trade, put some software in place to, be, to better run your business. Some of, those, some, of those, some of those benefits are really to improve the relations between the builder that you work for. So the relations between builders, trades, and suppliers. Um, when we think about the supplier chain disruption that we've been going through for a number of years, and we think about all the changes that are involved, there's a lot of moving parts. So we really need to be able to define what it is we need, what we're delivering, where is it in the ordering process, how can the labor that we have deliver it in a timely fashion. If we can do those things and we can overcome the scheduling challenges, we can digitize pictures and documents, we can keep our communications in an app in software, in what we call the cloud, so that it is running over the internet, it's backed up. We can do those types of things and we can integrate them in with the, with the business functionality that actually happens every day from these trades. We're gonna really accomplish a few things, right? We're gonna, we're gonna have major reductions in waste, which means we're not gonna order things we don't need, right? We're gonna use the things that we need. We'll have reductions in expenses that will come along with reductions in waste and labor waste. So we'll be more efficient. So that will help our bottom line. We'll have uh, schedule cycle time uh, increases, which means that it, from a positive perspective, we'll be on top of our schedules and reduce the amount of time it takes to accomplish what we need to take to accomplish because we won't be sending people out to jobs that don't need to go out on that day. We won't be making schedule mistakes. We'll be aligning the correct resources with the correct job at the correct time to accomplish the goals we need. And what we've seen in our experience is when you are more organized, you have the information available in a digital format, people have access to it, you're gonna have less job site accidents. So you're gonna be a better business with lower risk and better margins. How would you characterize this solution for the trade contractor? Is it the equivalent of a, an ERP for a small business trade contractor? Or is it really more of a project management and collaboration interface tool with the builder? I would classify it as an ERP um, okay. because what ends up happening is it's going to run every aspect of the operation of the business for the trade. Yeah. It's going to connect into an accounting solution, um, okay. but everything that you need is going to be contained within this cloud-based product. So it will run the entire enterprise for, for all needs. Okay. 
And ERPs, let's spell that out for folks who aren't familiar with it, right? That's enterprise resource planning. And really a lot of these tool sets were engineered initially in the manufacturing world and then made their way into other types of businesses. And that's kind of variations on this theme. And you've labeled it and custom configured it really in alignment with their business systems. Is that accurate? Yeah, it's a hundred percent accurate. And, and, and I think it's a really good point that you have there. Um, ECI in, in general, which is the company that I represent, we're in four major verticals. So we're in manufacturing. That's our largest vertical. Manufacturing is where the terminology of ERP came from. It's from an economical standpoint. That's where, that's where we looked looked at to become more efficient uh, as we evolved through through multiple evolutions of our economy. And so today, what we focus on at ECI is small to medium-sized businesses, and we focus on these types of solutions to help them run an efficient business so they can compete with the larger players out there that have systems like this in place. Okay. What's next? I'm going to give everybody a little bit of a visual of what we run into when we typically are introduced to a trade contractor's business. We ask them a few questions in the beginning and we say, where do you store job site information? Where's your job folders at? Where, where do they live? And they're typically in envelopes like this. They're created on spreadsheets and documents and they're printed and they have a filing structure that goes along with them. And these are passed out to the field and people have them in place. When they bring them back to the office and they're storing these jobs for service work that may happen down the road or historical reference, they're going into filing cabinets in the business. And this is a very common practice that we see with our trades. So is, is it is it 75% of the trade contractors out there that are kind of 1978 paper based on, on, on all of this stuff? Or is it 25%? What, uh, where would you ballpark that? It, it really is 75% or more. We, we see solutions where Google Calendar and Excel spreadsheets or software that was designed for another industry, um, like a commercial construction trade or a, uh, or a home builder is being used at the trade. We'll see some of that. It's not being used effectively, but this is usually backing it up when those solutions are in place because this is what they're relying on the majority of the time when we come in to talk to these trades. Yeah. And so so 25% are, are, are doing something with digitization of their business. Is it Does it tend to be the larger uh, trade contractors. Yeah, so we see it. We see technology that's in place more on the larger when they're when they're spreading out and they're trying to centralize. And we also see it from a trade perspective more in what we call the M and P's, the mechanical trades. So, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, low voltage. We tend to see those trades a little bit more technologically advanced from a business perspective and using solutions. Because they've got more pieces and parts to put together. They've got more complexity than a framing contractor, right? Which is a- That's right. But are you seeing uh, some, some of the smaller players who maybe have more of a digital native mentality adopting these tool sets as well? What we typically see with the smaller players is sometimes you do see that they have some things in place and that usually is a result of them coming from a larger organization and bringing whatever that technology was there into their organization. So this is common because a builder will, will tell the trade, I need you to show up for um, low voltage rough in or rough electric or whatever we want to call it for the individual trade on Tuesday. And then that trade has to think about what's going on on Tuesday and they have to look at their their resources that they have in the field. And so whiteboards like this are typically how they receive the date from the builder and how they think about their resources that they are going to apply to the job. And then when the date changes from a builder, they have to be able to go back to this whiteboard, make the changes, send out their text messages, update their Google calendars. And so that is the most common application of schedule management that we see when we go into these businesses. And we go into, we go into 100 of these businesses a month um, so it's very common and there's a lot of volume that we see to back this up. This is kind of what the operation looks like when we get a little deeper. So somebody says, uh, you know, sure, I, I'd like to I'd like to sign up for a demonstration. Well, we're ask, we're going to ask some questions about how things work. And you have the person holding the, 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 the bread on fire and the, the office is chaotic. And when you really ask them the questions and they really tell you the answers out loud, it's a little bit comical because this is. 
you know, I equate it to back pain, John, you know, they, they, they've, they, they're just living with it. They know it's a part of the business. They're dealing with it the best way they can. And that really puts us in a position to be able to show them that there really is a solution out there to make that pain go away. Businesses like this that have been dealing with the back pain, they don't really believe that there is a solution out there that, that can help them. Um, they haven't seen it yet. Um, they, they haven't really witnessed how technology in general uh, can go to the next level other outside of like the situation I was talking about earlier, where maybe somebody came from a larger trade business and now they're in a smaller business trying to grow it and they're bringing some of the technology and some of the solutions with them. But typically the mindset is there's no software that's designed for my company's processes. That's like the most common thing that we run into.